Good morning, good morning. Good morning. morning. You know, do you ever have those mornings where you wake up and you're just kind of like, and then like nothing goes as it should, and then you leave late, and then Dunkin' Donuts takes forever, even though you've pre-ordered, and then you think your husband's driving too slow, and then you make him mad. That's my morning. So I come in here all grumpy, and then I see Janice's smiling face, and then Mark is laughing in my office, and then I hear the serpent melody, and all of a sudden, I'm not as grumpy as I once was. So thank you for that this morning. As you can tell, it is nice and cold in here. I think it's colder in here than it is outside. But uh, that will keep us, hopefully the spirit will move and make us warm this morning. This does not tell me announcements. Let's see. Fifth Sunday potluck. We will talk about that and then we will talk about the youth. Next Sunday is the 29th. Bring something to eat. And we will be having our potluck immediately after the 1045 service. And then, other than that, Mark. Good morning, everybody. Um, and for those of you online, um, if you haven't met me, my name is Mark Wielander. I'm the youth director here at Rockbrook. And welcome to everybody. Special announcement I have this morning is regards to our youth. Um, we are putting on, at least in my tenure, the first ever big potato bar. So if you see me leaving like six times while you're eating, that's because I'm running to high beat to get something we didn't have. Um, but no, it's all good. It's going to be a good time. So, so come on down. Um, it'll be after the 1045 service. And I know some of you here now or maybe online are, are a little early risers um, in a different set than our people coming to the second service. So come back. I have to-go containers. You don't even need to sit down. So if you just wanted to pop in the kitchen and say, hey, wanted to go, we encourage that. Um, th there's lots of reasons why we do this. One, and first and for foremost, is the fellowship. That's the most important thing is for us to get together. To, to come as one under God, under Jesus, and to know each other better. And I think that's the biggest thing from all this. Um, the other reason we do it, it shows the youth, gives them some service, shows them how to prepare for things and do work, which is what we do on our mission trips. And then third, we, we always ask for a free will donation, and that helps for money going towards our mission trip. Just to shed a little light on that, Currently, and I'm closing the registration at the end of this month, we have 11 people registered. So there's um, myself and Emily Quigley who went last trip. Uh, this time we're adding uh, Marcus Roper and uh, my wife Heather to go. And we have seven youth and, and, and that's a packed van, okay? Um, hoping to have a few more youth come. Uh, we even invite the youth to invite a friend, which would add a second vehicle. Um, which I haven't done that yet. This will be my third trip since I've been the youth director. And, um, and also, um, this will be the furthest we've gone. We're going to Louisville, Kentucky. So the plan is to leave on a Saturday, go partway to St. Louis, camp out at a church there, do some mission work there, then wake up and arrive at our site in Louisville, who's in the Eastern Time Zone, so we lose an hour going there too. Um, Sunday afternoon, We'll embark on our mission with the Youth Works mission, and um, that'll go until Friday. The 11 people I have registered is $4,300 through Youth Works alone. So that's why we ask for your support. We do these fundraisers, and we really do appreciate all the support you give our youth. So thank you. I want to know what's going to be on the potato bar. I mean, that's the most important. Come on down. For the potato. I already gave Zach my list. I'm ready. We might need a crane to bring it back up. <laughs> um, 
Potato bars are one of those things that I kind of like a taco bar. Like, what's the point after if you put it in a in a, a to go container, you like you miss the taco part of it or the potato part of it because you have so many toppings. And I think I like the toppings more than yeah. That's my favorite part of potato. I was going to say something. No clue. All right. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship today. Let's take a deep breath. And then exhale it. And let's pray this prayer together. We praise you, O God, ruler of the universe, for creating us as free human beings, fashioned in your image, called and commanded to serve you, your creation, and each other. In this time of worship, let us entrust ourselves to your spirit who continues to remake us in the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. Turn with me to 545 and we will sing the church's one foundation.
I should remember the place that she's at, but I don't at this moment. But she's here in Omaha. Um, Annette is supposed to be going home, which is great. And um, Zach's dad is up and making breakfast and traversing stairs and doing really, really well. So thank you for the prayers for him. Do we have any other prayer concerns that or joys that we need to lift up? Okay, let's go to God in prayer. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for having a place where we can come and collectively worship you. God, the, the uh, sermon that and the scripture that we are hearing today is not one that is easy to hear, one that often gets overlooked for good reason. And God, I pray that you open our hearts to hear these words. And for those that this is hard for, God, be with them. God of love, hear our prayers. God, we pray for all of those this morning who are sick, both in body and mind. We pray for those who are recovering this morning from surgeries and falls. God, we just pray your continu continued healing mercies on these folks. And God, be with them as they continue on their health journey. God of love, hear our prayers. God, we pray this morning for all of the caregivers. God, that is not an easy job. And there are so many decisions to be made, and you always hope that you have made the right decision. And God, we pray for those folks. We pray that they have community, that they feel the love of this church, that you give them strength and hope. God of love, hear our prayers. God, we pray for all of those who are in war-torn countries, who are experiencing natural disasters and who are in places of political unrest. God, we pray that these communities will find peace. God of love, God, we pray for all of those who take care of us. Our hospital staff, our nurses and doctors and our first responders, God, we pray that you will continue to be with them and keep them safe. God of love, hear our prayers. God, we pray for the military this morning. We pray for all of those who are in, the go who are in government offices. God, we just pray for peace and courage for these folks this morning. God of love, hear our prayers. God, we pray for this church. We pray for our ministry team. We pray for our Sunday school classes. We pray for those who are joining us online and those who are with us this morning. God, we just pray that you continue to show us who we need to be. And God, that we, when shown, that we follow the way. God of love, hear our prayers. God, we thank you for the offerings that we lay before you. We pray that you will continue to bless them and multiply them. God of love, 
hear our prayers. God, we thank you this morning for your son, Jesus. God, we thank you that he came to our earth to show us how to live in the ways that you want us to live, how to bring heaven to earth. God, we pray this morning that we will do that. We pray all of this in your son Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is out of Mark 10, 42 through 44. And we will be hearing this from the Amplified Bible. If you will rise for the reading of the Gospel lesson, both the body and spirit. Calling them to himself, Jesus said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their powerful men exercise authority over them. But this is not how it is among you. Instead, whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first and most important among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the word of God in and around us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Servant, captain, or captive, laborer, attendant, handmaid, grunt, are all synonyms, not cinnamon, oh, are all synonyms for the word slave. Slave is a word that I don't feel comfortable saying, and I recognize, as you heard me pray, that it could be triggering for some, and as I have said from the very beginning, that words matter. And so this morning, I'm cognizant of that, and I want to hold space for that this morning. I'm beginning to think that the purpose of Jamie, or of Amy Jill Levine's book, is to spend six weeks just scratching my head. I am learning, along with you, more than I thought I would. And in that learning, I find myself kind of just tilting my head when I read the book like my dogs do, when they hear something that they just don't quite understand. So again, I find myself asking the question, what in the world is Jesus trying to tell us in Mark 10, 44, that whoever wishes to be first among you must be a slave to all. So today, I want to chew on two words here. My microphone is not going to stay on. So you, can you turn on my pul the pulpit yeah. microphone? So I want to chew on two words this morning. I want to chew on slave, and I want to chew on first. So again, I said with last week's scripture that Jesus tells us to love our neighbors as ourselves. And loving our neighbors as ourselves means that we see every single person as being created in the likeness of God, that everyone has worth and that everyone has value. And we also take into account that Genesis 126b tells us that we are to have dominion over creation. 
Not that we are supposed to have dominion over each other. Dr. AJ says that we cannot see the humanity or that image if we treat others as if they are property. So in antiquity, it was common for people to be kidnapped and sold in slave markets. Sometimes the kidnapped person was also held ransom so that the family and friends would have to pay money to get them back to the Roman Empire. It was thought that over half of the population of the Roman Empire were enslaved or descended from slaves. That people enslaved and metaphors of slavery are mentioned in the New Testament 118 times. Did you know that? I didn't know that. And 30 of those mentions are in the book of Matthew. So slavery was normative in biblical times. Even though it was common for that time or it was part of that culture, owning someone still is not right. And again, like last week, Jesus is trying to get the attention of the disciples. So did slavery have the same connotations as it does today? So Dr. A.J. believes that Jesus meant slave in the sense of prioritizing the needs of the community over one's own needs fully. And she even links slavery to Jesus' crucifixion because crucifixion was a punishment associated with slaves. She also thinks that Jesus' model is one from holding on to what we normally value to moving toward that for with which a price cannot be set. You cannot put a price on someone's life. Now, most folks would be horrified to be told to sell all of their stuff like we heard in week one and horrified to be told to hate their mother and father like we heard in week two. And now in week three, we would be horrified to be told that we're going to lose our freedom. So let's now go back to this word first. Whoever wishes to be first must be slave to all. So when talking about first, Jesus is talking about those who were rich and held status in the community. These were the folks who, made, who were made to be asked to, you would go to to ask for advice or you would go to if you needed help. They made the decisions for the community and they were held accountable for their decisions and people depended on them. And Jesus was telling the people that in order to be first, they had a lot of responsibility to the community, that they dealt with a lot. Think about all that Paul had to endure. Jesus was telling them that they had to be mindful of their community and those who are being mistreated. And today we have to do the same. We have to be mindful of our communities because we still have to recognize that we have a long history of slavery in the U.S. that caused much pain to a lot of folks from generation to generation to generation. We have folks today who are being trafficked in our nail salon in privately owned restaurants, in vegetable picking, in our factories. We have folks who are enslaved by systems that continue to oppress. And as AJ says, we are reminded that no one is free unless we all can be free. Let that be so. Amen. Turn with me to 398, and we will sing Jesus Calls Us.
you go about your week, remember that we are called to be people that pay attention, that we are called to be people who take care of each other. As we go forward, let us be those people. Go in peace. Amen.